Dabo Sweeney's Clemson Tigers shocked the college football world through the season's first two months. Their high-powered offense triggered by one of the nation's most electrifying freshmen. The last three weeks have found a rockier road with potholes filled with turnovers and miscues. Todd Boyd looks to get back to his early season form tonight, and Sammy Watkins' return should help the cause. Elshon Jeffrey reminded Gamecock fans last week just how special he can be in Steve Spurrier's South Carolina offense as the old ball coach tries to beat Clemson for a third straight time. But the defense, led by senior Melvin Ingram, has led the way and helped the Gamecocks to what could be only their second 10-win season in school history. The Tigers and the Gamecocks in the battle for the Palmetto State is next. on ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. It brings us to Williams-Brice Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina. A record crowd 10 years ago. We might be pushing that number tonight as the Tigers and the Gamecocks get together and a Heisman Trophy winner, George Rogers, has got the crowd in a frenzy. As we take a look at our rivalry history, brought to you by Sprint, this one goes all the way back to 1896. This, the 109th renewal, South Carolina has won the last two. And welcome to Columbia, everybody. Brad Nussler, along with Todd Blackledge. This time a year ago, the Gamecocks were on their way to Atlanta in the SEC championship game. This time around, it's Clemson on their way to Charlotte in the ACC title game. But, partner, we saw them back when things were really rolling with their offense and their defense, for that matter. But right now, the lug nuts are getting a little loose and the wheels are getting wobbly. Yeah, well, there's nothing that loosens lug nuts faster than turnovers, <laughs> and that's been the story for Clemson. First eight games, they had eight turnovers. They were plus nine in the turnover margin. They won all eight games. The last three games, they've had 11 turnovers, minus nine in the turnover margin. They're one and two in the last three games. Very critical for them to take care of the football tonight on the road. Well, you don't want to turn the ball over against a team that has as many takeaways as South Carolina did. Yeah, 29 forced turnovers. They're very athletic on defense. Statistically, they come in as the fifth stingiest defense in all of college football. But it's kind of interesting when you look at their schedule of the 11 games, three of the games they played against teams that were ranked in the top 50 in offense. Now, they won two of those three, but they also gave up over 40 points in two of those games. They'll be tested tonight by a very skilled Clemson offense. Both teams looking for their 10th win of the season. A sellout crowd on hand on a beautiful night. We're about three minutes away from kickoff. The Tigers and the Gamecocks in a battle for the state of South Carolina is coming up next. If you happen to be watching somewhere where it's cold or rainy, you should be jealous. 65 degrees on the final Saturday of November here in Columbia, South Carolina. It is perfect. And as always, she's almost perfect. Holly Road out on the field. Well, thank you. You know, this rivalry started out politically back in the late 1800s when farmers thought that the South Carolina elite weren't doing a good job at this university. So they founded Clemson University and they started playing football not long after. In 1902, they banned the series because a skirmish with bayonets broke out. They were off for seven years, but they've been playing every year since 1909. And guys, there's been a lot of hatred. In 1961, some fans dressed up as the Clemson team and took the field in pregame warm-ups before it was figured out. One year, fans stormed the field and killed a rooster at midfield. There's a lot of hatred here. And tonight, 79 kids from the state of South Carolina will suit up in this game. As the former Clemson coach, Charlie Pell, once said, this game is the difference between walking down the street with your head held high and hiding in the closet for the next year. And we hope that no bayonets break out tonight. Clemson has won 65, South Carolina 39. There have been four ties in a series that dates back to 1896. Last year, South Carolina winner, the same story the year before. They haven't won three straight since the 68 through 70 season, and that is a long, long time ago. South Carolina won the toss and deferred, so Clemson will get their hands on the football first. 
Actually, Clemson's kicking off. Wow, this place is rocking already. Bruce Ellington goes back deep. Spencer Benton tees it up. And we are underway in Columbia. Short kick taken at the 10 by Ellington. And he's put down before he can get to the 25-yard line. As we take a look right now at our impact players. Brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Alshon Jeffrey, nowhere near the number of catches or yards that he had a year ago, but he is a game changer at wide receiver for South Carolina. Melvin Ingram does a little bit of everything, including a touchdown on a fake punt. And Stephon Gilmore on the back end, three interceptions, seven in the last two seasons. He's the leader in the secondary. Last week, they threw the first two passes of the game, first two plays. Connor Shaw threw it to Alshon Jeffrey. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to get him early in this one. They'll run a sweep to Bird. He got out to the 28, brought down there by Rashad Hall. South Carolina, of course, doing without their all SEC tailback, Marcus Lattimore, who was injured back in mid October against Mississippi State. And for the most part, Brandon Wilds has filled in on that spot, number 22, and he's done a good job of yeah. it. There's Marcus, just had his knee surgery about uh, two weeks ago. Well, it's been a combination of Wilds and also Connor Shaw running from the quarterback position that's made up the difference for losing Lattimore. And now the end around a bird again. Got the corner, got the first down. Freshman with a first down, a seven-yard pickup. Well, I think Steve Spurrier counting on the energy of the game, an aggressive, fast Clemson defense. First two plays of the game, they go misdirection plays, and they get a first down. And again, Alshon Jeffrey in this game a year ago, five catches, 141 yards, and a touchdown. His numbers are down this year, but he is still very dangerous and uh, one of the best receivers in college football. Connor Shaw on the shotgun will give it off to Wilds. Good gain up the middle, picked up five. Now Sean Jeffrey last year, just phenomenal. 88 catches over 1,500 yards, averaging over 17 a catch and nine touchdowns. And you see this year, 114 in the country in receiving yards. Uh, part of that is Stephen Garcia threw the ball a little bit better than Connor Shaw. And part of it is they just, when they have thrown to him, they haven't been able to complete it. Here's what Shaw does well, though. And that's run with the football. He doesn't get much. Jonathan Willard, the outside linebacker, made the tackle. Talked about Steven Garcia. He was dismissed from the team earlier. It was actually after Connor Shaw was named the starter. Connor, Connor Shaw started the Kentucky game. It was shortly after that that Garcia was dismissed. And Shaw has done a nice job of taking care of the football, managing the team, and he's 6-1 and one as a starter. Got four receivers here on a third down at four. South Carolina 44% on the year on their third down conversions. Shaw's got time and now running out of it, but also running for the first down and a whole bunch more. Connor Shaw to the 40 to the 39 with a slide. 19 yard scramble. Well, this is what he gives you. Sometimes he's in too big of a hurry to scramble. This time, watch, he's looking for Alshon Jeffrey right in the slot, running down the seam, but he's double covered. And this is a great decision. You don't have what you like. Once you realize you're not going to be able to make that throw, get what you can. And in this case, it's a lot more than he needed for a first down. He had a career-high 90 yards rushing last week in the victory over the Citadel. Five straight runs now has South Carolina at the Clemson 40. Play action for Shaw. Loads, reloads, and now just lobs one out there and got it to his tight end, Cunningham. And Cunningham down inside the 25. That play right there shows the development of a quarterback over the course of playing games. 
Earlier in the year, Connor Shaw doesn't like what he sees. He's going to take off right now. But he keeps his eyes downfield on this scramble and a nice little touch pass to Cunningham, who's going to gain more yards by catching and running than Shaw would have if he would have just kept it. So another first down just inside the 25 on the opening drive for South Carolina here in the first quarter. Shaw, the sophomore on a flowery branch, Georgia. Takes the handoff inside again and zips it to the end zone. Alshon Jeffrey had a hand on it, but Cody Sensabaugh broke it up. Well, he had him. He had him single covered. And anytime you get single coverage on the two receivers that we have in this game, you want to take a shot at it. Sensabaugh has been their best corner. He recovers and gets his right, his left hand in there and knocks the ball away, his right hand. That, that's beautiful coverage without interfering by Cody Sensabaugh. Eighth play of the opening drive. And a second down and 10 for the Gamecocks. Go with two tight ends. Dalshon Jeffrey trots out to the top of your screen. Going there by Ace Sanders in the slot. Shaw again steps up in the pocket and scrambles. Got a decent block from Wilds to get him the two yards that he did gain. Now brings up third down and long. Steve's still getting that headset adjusted. <laughs> Shaw has a look in the shotgun on a third down and eight. Trips up to the right-hand side and a timeout taken by Clemson. So that'll give South Carolina a little chance to talk about it on the sideline as well. Four minutes into the game, no score. South Carolina with a big third down coming back. Media timeout. The SEC on ESPN from Columbia, South Carolina. Hometown Gamecocks on the move. Now they're opening possession, and yes, there is a traveling trophy that goes to the winner of this game. You got bragging rights for the state of South Carolina for the next year. As Davo Sweeney said to us, though, more importantly, one team's going up with a win, somebody else is sliding down, whoever yeah. loses. Steve Spurrier changed his formation during that timeout that Clemson called. Third down and eight. Connor Shaw, just a three-man rush, but it's coming from behind, and down he goes. Andre Branch. Well, Andre Branch has been their leading guy in terms of getting pressure on the quarterback. That's his ninth and a half sack on the season. He's a speed rusher, and, and that's, a, that's a mistake. Why would you have your tailback blocking their best pass rusher? You got a tight end there who blocks nobody. The tackle blocks nobody, and you have a tailback, Wilds, trying to block their best pass rusher. That was not a good concept. No, it wasn't. Justice Cunningham was just standing there, number 87, the tight end. Field goal attempt on the way, 47 yards, and it's good. Could have been good from 57 yards. Nice kick by Jay Wooten. Puts the Gamecocks on the board, but Andre Branch prevents a touchdown for that sack. Bring the Tiger a little bit earlier here. In Columbia earlier in the week. Burn them, hang them, whatever it takes. 109th matchup between these two teams. Clemson earlier in the season, Todd, when we were talking about their offense and everything was working for them at 8 0, yeah. but not lately. Well, you're right. And, uh, you know, they. They've done a great job of coming back in the second halves of games, but uh, the turnovers have been the difference. You know, they overcame the slow starts when they were taking care of the football. When they weren't protecting it, they couldn't make up the ground. Very short kick. Taken at the 15 by Brown. And Jerron Brown got out to the 34-yard line. As we check in for the first time with Reese Davis. Reese. All right, Brad, Taco Bell studio update. A game going on at ESPN2, Florida and Florida State. And John Brantley's last game in the swamp has been an utter disaster early. Trying to throw back, Florida State had it sniffed out, and Mike Harris going to take it and go the other way. Brantley already, uh, look, there's only 12 minutes to go in the second quarter. He's already thrown three interceptions. Seminole's up 14 to nothing. Oh, oh, not a good start for the Gators. Let's see how the Tigers do on their first snap Todd's boy pump fakes look out from behind ball is out they're going to call it an incomplete pass yes they are but a big hit by Gilmore 
Well, they tried to use Sammy Watkins as a decoy. That's what the pump fake was for. And then reload. But when he reloaded, there was nowhere to go with the ball, so he had to come back to Watkins. But that was too late. Gilmore coming off the edge. A very fast rusher. And able to get to Boyd and disrupt the throw. That's why he was one of our impact players about four minutes ago. He can do it that way, and he can do it intercepting passes in the secondary. Here's Andre Ellington backing his way to the 40-yard line. Five minutes into the game. Speaking of which, let's take a look at our impact players. Brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Philip Price, an impact player because he missed last week. And Clemson gave up six sacks. He's back in there at tackle. Sammy Watkins missed last week as well. I think it goes without saying the impact he can have. And Andre Branch has already showed us his impact with the sack on Connor Shaw in the first series. Todd Boyd over the middle. Skipped one through. Devontae Holloman's hands. Lucky that that wasn't intercepted. Well, again, Todd Boyd, first eight games. 24 touchdowns, only three interceptions. The last three games, three touchdowns and six interceptions. And some of them are just errant throws. And uh, that one should have been intercepted. He's that lucky. Intended for Dwayne Allen. And he overshot him by a bunch. So Zimmerman will have to punt. Ace Sanders waits way back there on the other end. Air catch. And Sanders will take it at the 24-yard line. 9-28 in the first quarter. Take a look at this week's BCS standings. Brought to you by Tostitos. LSU and Alabama have already won. Todd, you want to do the honors on uh, number yeah. three spot there? Yeah. Or, uh, we just tend to do that every week. There, there goes another one. They're going down this way yeah. somewhere. Virginia Tech won earlier in a route, so they know that they're going to Charlotte on a roll to meet this Clemson team. We'll be there in Charlotte next week for the ACC championship. And Clemson, will they limp in or will they win in? Virginia Tech definitely won in with a big win over Virginia today. At the 25-yard line, Alshon Jeffrey now will trot out there and find himself as the slot man. Connor Shaw gives it off to Wilds. And Wilds, same play as... On the first series, goes five yards right up the middle. You know, I, this guy is a great story. I mean, a, a great story in college football. Brandon Wiles, a true freshman, start of the year. He's the 15 tailback. He just he's playing on special teams most of the time. And uh, you know, Lattimore gets hurt, but there were other guys ahead of him that got hurt that gave him a chance. But through the first seven games, he only had 13 carries. Right. And then all of a sudden, he's he's elevated to being the starter. He runs for over 100 in his first start, 28 carries against Tennessee, and uh, he's just been outstanding. There's the guys that were in front of him. Fifth on the depth chart, knee, knee, wrist, ankle, and Wilds all of a sudden, and now he's got 300-yard games in the last four weeks. Not flashy, but dependable. Takes care of the football. Bruce Ellington's going to run the inside, but they'll give it straight ahead to Wilds, and there he is, Mr. Dependable. Six more yards, first down. Steve told us he's got good body lean. Yes, that's that's some body lean right yep. there. Leaned over for the first down, and a new set of downs for uh, for Carolina. Good body lean, plays behind his pass. <laughs> Two freshmen out of Blythewood, South Carolina. Gets the call again. About four more yards. Deshaun Williams made the tackle for Clemson. Coming into the game, this Clemson defense gives up an average of almost 185 yards per game rushing, which kind of plays right into the hands of South Carolina. They want to run the football, try to run some safe play action passes off of that. And so far, South Carolina having their way a little bit running the football. Two guys have had 100-yard games against the Clemson defense this year. C.J. Brown of Maryland and Tevin Washington of Georgia Tech. The Georgia Tech game was Clemson's first loss after they had run off eight straight wins to start the season. Second and seven, Shaw, quarterback draw all the way. Got a nice block, got another first down. Somebody got a block right in the middle of the field there. Well, I think it might have been Wilds. You know, anytime you see that tailback take off and lead up through, you know it's a quarterback draw by design. 
It's not a scramble. Watch the tailback Wilds, number 22, take off, get a block right on the middle linebacker, yep. Hawkins. That was it. So South Carolina got a field goal out of their first drive and on the move again here. Two passes, 11 runs so far. And a 3 0 lead with seven and a half to go in the first quarter. Wilds dragged down by Malachi Goodman. You know, the thing that's interesting to me about what Steve has done here at South Carolina is he's winning, he's made them a, a legitimate power in the East, but he's done it completely different than he did at Florida. I mean, look at their pass rankings at South Carolina. The only time they were any decent rank wise was 2006 they were 19 they're more of a run oriented team play hard nose defense solid in the special teams there's more than one way to win more than one way to skin a cat that's right yeah we always skin we, always, tonight, right? we, we all exactly <laughs> try to skin a tiger connor shaw play action deep ball going out there for jeffrey and overshot him i was going to say steve you know when he talks to holly and you and i we always get the impression that it's driving him crazy that they can't throw the ball better. But I think he's gotten to the point where he really yeah. doesn't care. He just no. likes winning. I don't care he how He loves happens. winning. I mean, more than anything, he's a competitor and he loves to win. And I think he likes that his quarterback takes care of the football and can run a little bit. And the zone read has become their bread and butter. It's not the fun and gun. It's, it's something completely different. But they are, uh, you know, they have really established themselves in the SEC East. Even though they're not going back to Atlanta, uh, <laughs> well, they won all their games in the East. Including, including, the Georgia. One, including the one over yeah. Georgia. But the Auburn game stuck in their craw, I'm sure. That's the one they felt like they should have had. Shaw, deep ball, Ellington, touchdown. Make him smile about the passing game a little bit. Point guard on the basketball team, the point man on a 49 yard touchdown pass. And mom and dad looking on, Lee and Don saying that's the way we taught him how to throw the ball. Extra point is good. Well, Clemson paying so much attention to Alshon Jeffrey. They've got their best corner on him, Cody Sensabaugh. Connor Shaw knows that. He goes to the opposite side of the field after stepping up in the pocket and finds Ellington working on the freshman Freeland for a touchdown. Williams Bryce Stadium rocking right now. Bruce Ellington, I mentioned the point guard on the basketball team, but on the end of a career long 49 yard touchdown pass from Connor Shaw, and it's 10 0 South Carolina early. 75-yard drive and seven plays, a little under three minutes and a perfect pass, Todd. Yeah, it really was a beautiful pass. And they scored six touchdowns and seven possessions last week. Scores on their first two this week. In high, short kick taken on the fly. The 22 by Ellington. And this is Bruce Ellington's cousin, Andre. Both wearing number 23, both from Monk's Corner, South Carolina. Holly? Well, that's just how close this rivalry is. These two young men are cousins. They grew up together. They said they were like brothers growing up, but one would wait for the other at the bus stop getting off the bus. They played countless hours of video games, basketball, everything. And, and actually, Andre Ellington was playing football at Clemson last year. His cousin, Bruce, who plays basketball for South Carolina, went up, saw some games, and thought, I'm going to give this a try. And so he joined the football team this year. Next year, probably only one sport for Bruce, we hear. No gain on the play for D.J. Howard. He might have lost a yard. Talk about it. North Carolina and South Carolina got together to play basketball last night. They could have used Bruce Ellington. SEC all-freshman team. Averaged 13 points a game at 61 threes. I saw him play a lot last year. He was big, a big part of Darren Horn's basketball team. They need him back out there. He'll go back to basketball now after this game. And he can play in the bowl game if he wants to, Steve Spurrier says. Todd boy, deep ball, Sammy Watkins dropped it. Oh boy, Haddon would have been a touchdown. Well, he had to wait a little bit on the ball. You know, he didn't play last week, and he could smell that end zone. He wanted to keep running to the end zone. 
Watch the ball a little bit behind him, and he had to wait for it and reach back and just wasn't able to pull it in. He knew the safety, Holloman, was closing on him and just not able to, to grab it. He does not miss many. Great hands. I got to think they'll come back to that sometime, though. Todd Boyd in trouble. Buys himself some time. Throws complete to midfield. A couple yards shy of a first down, but he got it to DeAndre Hopkins. Well, that was the unfortunate thing of the drop by Sammy Watkins is it brought up third and long and even though Taj Boyd makes that completion they still have another situation where it's a three and out and they have to punt. At least the field position will switch yes. a little bit from Zimmerman this time. Ace Sanders back waiting on the other end. Ace averaging a little over nine yards of punt return. Zimmerman's kick, Sanders fair catch. Ooh, he had to backpedal all the way inside the five to the four. I think if he had another chance, he might have let that one go and hope for a fortuitous. So Sammy Watkins, what could have been and would have been his 11th touchdown of the year had he held on to that long ball from Todd Boyd. Instead, 10 nothing South Carolina. They've got the ball back. They owned the first 10 minutes of this football game. The only bad news for them, they have to start inside their own five yard line. You see the tight end Cunningham, part of a three receiver group to the left of Connor Shaw, who stands in his own end zone. Now, Sean Jeffrey is to the top of the screen. Straight ahead. And Wild sort of slipped on his own and only got about a yard gain. Let's check in with Reese. Brad Baylor fresh off that scintillating victory against Oklahoma, taking on Texas Tech up 17-7. Seth Dagey of the Red Raiders finding Eric Ward. Tommy Tuberville's team needs this win to be bowl eligible. Baylor just answered that touchdown with another. A lot of points going to be scored in this one. 23-14 extra point pending. Here 10-0. South Carolina. Four and a half remaining in the first quarter. I like that right there. Taj Boyd going over. Yep. Talking to his wide receivers. Saying, Sammy, you're going to get another one soon. Yep. And that's an empty backfield. And Connor Shaw standing right at his own goal line. This is a run all the way by the quarterback. And he weaves his way for what he can. Slides a yard short of the first down. Very athletic guy. Pretty good speed, likes to run the football, takes care of it. Of course, his older brother is an option quarterback. Uh, was at Georgia Tech, now he's at Georgia Southern. Jay Bo had the weekend off. They'll be in the playoffs. The Eagles at Georgia Southern. That's his dad, Lee, on the left, a high school coach, Flowery Branch, Georgia. His mom played basketball at North Georgia, so it's a very athletic family. Right now, the Shaws are 29 and 6 as a team. Flowery Branch <laughs> High School, Georgia Southern, South Carolina. Not a bad record. Third and short of an eye backfield behind Shaw, but he's going to throw for it, maybe. Flushed out of the pocket. Now he will run. He knows he's got the first and a bunch more. Cuts back to the middle of the field. Connor Shaw all the way out near midfield. See, this guy is not just a mobile quarterback. He's a weapon in the run game because when he decides to run, he becomes a running back. So you call play action pass if it's not there you give him the green light to go and then watch him tuck the football He has good vision of the field He's gonna get as much as he can get and then go down and, and not take a big hit out in the open field That's just excellent quarterback play by Connor Shaw playing to his strengths talked about 90 yards a career high last week He is well on his way to break of that 65 already in the second time that he's run for a first down in a third down situation and Wilds going to be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Ready Moore, big defensive tackle, made the stop. Yeah, I think right now Kevin Steele, the defensive coordinator at Clemson, has to make a decision. What are we going to do to slow down him running the football? Because we can't just rush relentlessly. If he gets outside of us or gets into a lane, we're having a hard time getting him on the ground. So you might see them go to a spy technique or just try to rush a little bit more under control and keep Connor Shaw in the pocket. Biggest defensive play they've made so far was that sack by Andre Branch on the opening drive for South Carolina. 
Here comes some extra pressure. Shaw's got to throw it in the dirt. Now, Wilds was in the vicinity. It looked like they were trying to set up a screen. screen. Yeah, it was a screen, and the Clemson defensive line read it right away. You know, defensive line, if they're smart, as soon as they feel the lineman let them go, they say, uh-oh, this is not normal. And they read the screen. They knock Wilds around. They, they get out in the throwing lane, and Connor Shaw did what he had to do, which is throw the ball away. Stephon Anthony gave Shaw a pretty good tap. Now John Jeffrey going to the locker room. Looks like he's favoring his left arm a little bit. Holly will check and let us know what she finds out. Meanwhile, third down and 10. South Carolina hasn't had to punt so far. Flares it out to Wilds. Nice job by Branch to just break it down and make the tackle. That's excellent work by Branch. I mean, again, this is a defensive end at 6'5", 260 in space, making a play one-on-one -on, -one on a tailback. Excellent technique, keeps his leverage, keeps him outside, forces him back in, and then wraps him up for the tackle. I mean, you, you can't teach a guy to do it any better than that. Cat gets mouse on that one. <laughs> so now they will punt. Joey Scribner Howard to kick. DeAndre Hopkins will have to fair catch on the other. Look out, a lot of traffic. Balls out, flags down. Yeah. Boy, there were just too many bodies in the way. The ball kind of started drifting back towards the towards the punting team and Hopkins was trying to come up and that's where there was a, a lot of bodies there. Might have been a lack of halo there with the penalty. We'll see what Tom Zamorski, our referee, has got to say. As he clears everybody out of the way and the officials have a little committee meeting. All right, Tom, here's a call. Kick catch interference against the kicking team. 15 yards to spot the foul. First down. So that is the call, first penalty of the game. And that could have been a disaster for Clemson. As it is, yeah. they get a little extra yardage out of it. Well, the interesting thing, it was actually a Clemson player, number 38, Gary Peters, who got in his way, but he was kind of pushed by Marty Marquette, number 39, of South Carolina. So it, it was uh, his own player, but the fact that he was kind of pushed into that area is why the interference call was made. That is one ugly looking punt return yeah. attempt there. Now let's see if Clemson's offense can get in gear. Tigers at their own 39. They give it to Sammy Watkins on an end around. And Sammy goes for three, maybe, maybe four. Want to get him involved and get him, they'd like to get him about 15 touches a game, maybe. Well, the most important thing right now is you look at what Watkins has meant to the Clemson offense is they got to get a couple first downs. They haven't gotten a first down yet. They've got to move the chains, possess the football, and try to get into a little tempo. Dodge Boy threw that a little bit behind Ellington, but this is going to be close to their first first down. Let's see where they spot it. And if it's short, this is going to be the first big test for this Clemson offense. In third and one to two situations, the last three weeks, they've not been very good. Only five of ten conversions, and they need this third and short. That's Chad Morris, the offensive coordinator in his first year at Clemson. Third and one. Ellington sticks his head in there and got the first down. Needed a yard, he got two. Melvin Ingram brought him down. But Andre Ellington, the junior, as we said, out of Monk's Corner, South Carolina, which is southeast of here. Monk's Corner is a pretty popular spot when you got the two Ellingtons yeah. coming from the same place. Might be the final play of the quarter. And it was a good quarter for South Carolina. They scored on a field goal, 47 yards on their opening drive. And then a touchdown bomb. Connor Shaw to the other Ellington. Bruce Ellington. And that's where we are at the end of one in Columbia. Big crowd on hand on a perfect night at williams Bryce Stadium. All Gamecocks so far.
The SEC on ESPN. We head into the second quarter. Our matchup between Clemson and South Carolina. 10 nothing. All South Carolina so far. Totally dominated that first 15 minutes. Philip Price, the left tackle who was hurt last week, is out of the ball game. He started, but he's out. Brandon Thomas in at left tackle now. Here's a handoff and weave in his way is Mike Bellamy for a first down. Let's check in with Holly. Well, guys, I'm here with South Carolina running back Marcus Lattimore, who's nine days out from surgery on his left knee. How did the surgery go? Uh, it went well. And, um, you know, it's no more pain. And I'm feeling good just getting, getting rehab ready and ready to go. Now, the coaches told us that you won the Workout Warrior Award in the, in the weight room. How are you going to apply that work ethic to your rehab? Oh, it's going to be 100% every day. You know, I'm going to give all I got every day to get back to my team. Thanks very much, Marcus. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. He is a star in the Southeastern Conference. We wish him well in his rehab. Can't wait to see him back in a Gamecock uniform next year. Todd's Boyd, here comes the pressure. Deep ball, jump ball, and Watkins loses that battle with Marty Marquette. It's well played by Marquette. He was able to get his eyes around, find the ball. The ball was slightly underthrown, but because it had his eyes on the football, he's able to stop and go up and battle for the football. A lot of times defensive backs get in that position. They don't get their eyes to the ball, and a guy catches it right by their ear. There's Philip Price. As I said, one of our impact players, we chose him because they gave up six sacks last week in that loss to NC State with him out of the lineup. And now Ellington broke a tackle somehow, yeah. stayed on his feet, and I think he's got a first down. Well, that was the guy that was lined up against Brandon Thomas. Melvin Ingram doesn't miss many tackles. I think he was surprised that Ellington ran right into his arms on this play, but he didn't wrap those arms. Oof. He made good contact, but he didn't wrap. And Ellington spun out of the tackle and got all the way up to the, close to the first down. Great balance. Now it's Ellington getting the first down this time, but not by much. Antonio Allen, their spur, kind of a combination safety outside linebacker made the tackle, but not before Ellington got a first down. Well, we've seen Clemson try to get the ball to Hopkins. We've seen him try to get it to Watkins. I think Dwayne Allen, number 83, the tight end, is a guy that they need to try to work into the offense right now. In scoring territory, a big target. Lined up in the backfield right now, number 83. On first and 10, the give to Bellamy. Same play that picked up good yardage. Only gets a couple this time. Dabo Sweeney is really excited about him. Mike Bell Bellamy, freshman. Out of Florida, he just thinks that he's going to get bigger and stronger over the next year or two. Right now, he's only 175 pounds, but he has great speed and elusiveness. Put a little weight on him, a little strength. He's going to be dynamite. Todd Boyd fires, completes. Sammy Watkins has got a first down inside the 15-yard line. So finally, number 10 and number two hookup. Yeah. And remember, that first first down that they got, it was almost like Clemson could take a big sigh of relief. They got a first down. Now they've got a little offensive rhythm. Again, this is a highly skilled offensive football team. When you think of Watkins and Allen and Boyd and Ellington and Hopkins, they've got great offensive skill. Four first downs on this drive. Watkins joins Boyd in the backfield. He'll ride him and then take it himself for a couple up the middle. Evan Taylor made the tackle. Dodge Boyd, Chad Morris was telling us yesterday, you know what, I hate to put it this way, but I want him to get hit. I want to see him run the ball a little bit. He goes out right now. And on the 11th play of the drive, they're going to go with a wildcat to somebody. Andre Ellington will take the direct snap. And will run it himself. Jack Wilson in on the tackle along with Kelsey Quarles as he's inside the 10 near the 9 and the quarterback will come back out. Well, again, now's the situation. This part of the field, you know South Carolina is an excellent defensive football team. Very stingy. Find your matchup. Where do you have your best matchup? On how they're covering Dwayne Allen, Sammy Watkins, or DeAndre Hopkins? That's Dwayne Allen in motion. Extra man on the pressure, flare out, Allen, touchdown.
one of the finalists for the Mackey Award for the best tight end in college football. And Todd said you got to get it to him eventually. They did for a nine-yard touchdown. By putting him in motion, it's, it's harder for a coverage to be tight on him. And there was nobody that picked him up quickly. It was an excellent call by Chad Morris and a touchdown for the Tigers. And the extra point is up and good. So just like that, on that drive, we see the Clemson team that we saw earlier in the season. Todd Boyd hooking up with his tight end. Todd Boyd is 28th touchdown pass of the season. It's 10-7. There was the battery, Boyd to Allen, ending a 61-yard drive on 12 plays, school record, 28th touchdown pass for Todd Boyd. And Ellington did a great job on that play too, Todd. Yeah, here he is right here. Now watch him get the block on Melvin Ingram. I mean, the protection turned the line away. That left the back on the defensive end. Beautiful cut block to clear the throwing lane for Taj Boyd. And uh, this is no easy task. Ellington, five carries for 22 tough yards in the ball game so far, but that may have been his best play of the game so far. No doubt about it. That play doesn't get completed without that block. 10-7. Kick. About three yards deep. Ellington's going to take a knee, and with that, we've got time to check in with Reese Davis. Reese. All right, Brad, and I have time to give you a sports center right now presented by Discover Card. As you probably heard throughout the day, the NBA owners and players have reached a tentative agreement to end the lockout. It would be a 66-game schedule that would start on Christmas Day. Stanford and Notre Dame playing on ABC. Andrew Luck and Levine Toilolo. That's the only touchdown so far. Cardinal ranked sixth, looking for a BCS at large on top of the Irish by seven. We know Virginia Tech will move up in the rankings by virtue of their big win over Virginia. And they head to the ACC title game against this Clemson Tiger team that trails by three. Connor Shaw, 49-yard touchdown pass, 64 yards rushing so far. And his Gamecocks set up shot at the 20-yard line. Quick throw out to Ellington. And good open field stop by Martin Jenkins. Let's check in with Holly. Well, if Carolina fans are wondering why Alshon Jeffries not on the field, about seven minutes ago, they took him to the locker room. They're examining his left hand for an injury. Guys, he's been in there an awful long time. I don't know if they're taking x-rays or not, but I'll keep you posted. One other injury update, Philip Price for Clemson, I'm told, is not injured. But the coaches just didn't really think he was moving as well as he should on the offensive line. He's trying to come back from a sprained MCL, so Brandon Thomas moved out to tackle. David Smith is in at left guard. They thought they may have to shuffle that line, and indeed they did. Second down and five. Connor Shaw with three wideouts will give it off. Kenny Miles spinning his way and on his way. Miles into Clemson territory. 28 yards on the run. Well, this is a combination of hard running and bad tackling because you get guys right at the point of attack for Clemson that are going to make contact with the back. The first one being Courtney Brown, number 90, but nobody wraps him up. So the good hard running by Kenny Miles turns a very short game into a big game. Almost had a face mask yep. as part of that, too. And Alshon, right after Holly did the report, has trotted back out from the locker room. Meanwhile, first down, the Gamecocks with the Tiger 47. Shaw pumps and runs out of bounds. Picked up a couple. See, that's a more controlled rush that time by Clemson. And that, that's what they're going to have to do with Connor Shaw. They've got to maintain leverage on this guy. He's already burned him enough to realize we can't just pin our ears back and try to collapse the pocket. We've got to maintain leverage on him and keep him contained. You saw Kevin Steele, the defensive coordinator on the sideline, when we talked to him last night. He was like, you know, there are some guys that can run as a quarterback, and then there's some guys that can run as a quarterback and run fast. And that's what Connor Shaw can do. Changes things up on a second down and nine, and now some confusion is going to cause a timeout. Nine forty-one remaining first half. We'll take the timeout as well. Ten-seven, South Carolina leading at home. Carolina's baseball team back-to-back -back national championships. That is really hard to do in the college level. But while we're away, Alshon Jeffrey, they're calling the strained left hand, and he was warming up over there on the sideline. 
And he's back out there now. He'll trot out to the top of your screen. Three wides that way on a second down and nine for Connor Shaw. Shaw looking that way, wanted to throw, flags are down. Now he scrambles to throw back the other way and completes it to Kenny Miles, who'll step out of bounds, but again, a penalty marker on the play. Yeah, and thrown in the area where typically there's offensive holding. Or a chop block, maybe. Mm. Even worse. Chop block, number 60 of the offense. 15-yard penalty. Still first down, second down, second down. Terrence Campbell, one of the 16 seniors playing his final game at williams Bryce Stadium. The right guard out of Austell, Georgia with the shot block. That's going to back it all the way into South Carolina territory inside the 40-yard line. You already noticed the, the adjustment the Clemson defense has made. Pretty smart in how they're rushing Connor Shaw, trying to maintain leverage and under control. The four-man rush here with a little stunt, but the pass goes out in the flats to Kenny Miles. And nice job in the open field by Martin Jenkins. That's the second time he's made a tough tackle out in space. Monday night countdown served by Applebee's at 7 o'clock Monday night on ESPN. Brad Nessler, Todd Blackledge, Howard Rowan, our ESPN crew here at williams Bryce Stadium on a beautiful night. 65 degrees at kickoff. The first 10 points were South Carolina's. Clemson within three now. Shaw over the middle to Miles. Almost a face mask. He got away from that. Kenny Miles all the way to the 41, but a flag flies in. Two of them do at the end of the play. Kenny Miles, two years ago when the game was played against Clemson here in Columbia, had a huge game. 114 yards rushing. South Carolina won that game 34 to 17. Block in the back, 87 of the offense. 10 yards to the spot of the foul, third down. And you heard somebody on the sideline yell, how about a face mask? Yeah. Because after he caught that ball, you're going to see one that's very close, right? Well, could have been, maybe should have been. You know, a lot of times if a guy lets go right away and lets that hand slide off the mask, they won't call him. If a guy continues to use the mask to help and aid in the tackle, they'll call him. Kenny Miles was introduced with the seniors tonight, even though he has a year of eligibility remaining should he choose to return. But most people feel because of Marcus Lattimore coming back, Brandon Wilds being a freshman, and some other guys that maybe he's down the line and that he won't come back next year. And by being introduced tonight, it would seem to indicate that he wouldn't be back. That guy will be. Connor Shaw, plenty of time this time, over the middle, same guy, to the 45, so Kenny Miles has a receiver right now for Connor Shaw. Came in with only three catches on the year, and he's got three tonight. Because of the long yardage needed, Clemson was able to just rush four, drop seven, play zone, and force Connor Shaw to dump the ball underneath to his check down, and then make a tackle in space, so good solid defense on that drive by Clemson. And that chop block cost them dearly. It'll force Scribner Howard to punt. Low snap, he bottles it, oh and it's blocked. Ball rolling inside the 30. Nobody there yet, and now Clemson's got it at the 25. Drew Trailer just kind of put a hand up as the punter tried to just get it out of there in one of those rugby-style kicks. I, I and it went right he, into the hand of the onrushing lineman. I, I thought he kicked it off the ground, actually. I don't even know that he ever got the ball picked up. Let's take another look. It's bobble, it's bobble. I think he kicked it. Gee. Oh, he didn't even hit the hand. Yeah, that's football <laughs> follows him. It, it is. Drew Trailer. It hit him in the ankle. You don't see a lot of block punts by a guy hitting one in the shin. And then he runs over the punter as well. So there's the first big... Mistake of the night. And it gives Clemson an opportunity at the 26-yard line. Ellington straight up the middle. Best run of the night by Ellington. 17 yards, and he's got it at the 10. Yeah, they kind of caught that South Carolina defense with their eyes in the wrong place. They lined up in a different formation. They quick snapped the football. 
They got a big run there on first down. Right at the Tannis first and goal. Trying to take advantage of a special teams error. Ellington wrapped up this time, might have lost a yard. Devin Taylor, a defensive end, made the stop. Now, the last time they got down here in a very similar spot, it was Todd Boyd to the All-American candidate, Dwayne Allen, the tight end for the touchdown. Let's see what they do here on second down and goal. Allen set up much like he was the last time, but now they'll put him in motion the other way. Boyd throws across the middle and in and out of the hands of Jerron Brown. He would have had it down near the one-yard line. Good play by D.J. Swearinger. Dabo Sweeney wanting pass interference all the way down to about the 15-yard line to argue his case. To no avail. Third down and 10. And again, it's a matchup situation for Taj Boyd. You're in field goal range. Do not throw a needless, careless pass here. If you got it, throw it. If not, let's kick a field goal. Third and goal. Boyd tosses. It's an option. And the ball in the air, dangerously incomplete, intended for Taj Boyd from DeAndre Hopkins. So they tried a little option pass with Hopkins throwing back to his quarterback. He almost tucked it in there, but... Uh, that one did not work out the way they had planned. Well, Antonio Allen brought the pressure, ran right through the block of Ellington. Melvin Ingram was in coverage. It could have been completed, but a dangerous play nonetheless. Chandler, Captain Zero will try a 27-yard field goal. Up and good, but we got a flag down. Ball start, number seven in the offense. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. So now it's going to make it a little more difficult. He'll try a 32-yard field goal. First penalty against Clemson. And that's one of those where you go, okay, that was a perfect kick. Now, yeah. let's not get the yips right here if you're the field goal kicker just because it's five yards farther out. Thirty two yard kick that zero still got it perfect and a tie game. Well, if you're Clemson, you're happy with the tie. If you're South Carolina, you're even happier that your defense got to stop after the mishandled snap. And we're right where we thought we'd be back to even. And it could have been a touchdown dropped by Boyd. 10-10 between the Tigers and the Gamecocks. Looking in on Williams Bryce Stadium tie game. Time right now for our Aflac trivia question. Aha! Only one quarterback's got four wins in this Clemson South Carolina rivalry. Who is it? They've been playing for over a hundred years. Speaking of a hundred years, yeah. Well, yeah. My uh, wife Sherry's grandmother Mary Jones turns a hundred tomorrow. My whole family went out there for Thanksgiving and. Uh, it's an awesome thing. So I just want to say happy birthday to Gam. That's a, it's a great accomplishment. Gam 100. Yep. Coming up this week. Congratulations. Many more ahead, I hope. Here's a kick. And it's going to go out of bounds. So that'll give South Carolina a good field position. And we've got good field position as we head to Reese Davis. Reese. Brad, Texas Tech and Baylor. Robert Griffin the third on a third down play. Uh, do what he does so well, break some tackles and take off scrambling. But watch what happens coming up at the end of the play. Cornelius Douglas going to go up and catch him really with a forearm under the jaw. Griffin's arms flopped down, looked as if he was completely out. He took him to the sideline after his head bounced off the turf. And apparently Griffin convinced him that there was no need for any extensive concussion testing because he came right back in and scored again. And Baylor has a 31-21 lead just before the half. That kid's something. 10 10 here, 6 14 till halftime. Connor Shaw on the ground. Another 14 yard gain. He might have 100 yards by halftime. A little confusion on the outside edge of the defense that time. That's a zone read play. And the two guys on the edge of the defense were kind of looking around, not sure who had who. 
Connor Shaw saw that, kept the football, and went right up the field for a nice game. He's got 79 yards on nine carries. Carried it into Clemson territory for a first down at the 46. Now the end around to Berg. They've tried this two or three times already tonight. He gets it to the 40-yard line. Well, and now that Alshon Jeffrey is back on the field, it's about time to, to give him another shot, to, to throw something in his direction, particularly if you get him in a formation or an alignment where they're not going to be able to double cover him like he is now. He's in the slot right here. Second down and three for South Carolina. And they look to the sideline, maybe changing things up here. Shaw will give it off to Kenny Miles, and that's going nowhere fast. Rennie Moore made the first hit, and there were a whole bunch of Tigers helping him. Well, you just can, can see and feel kind of the change in energy and confidence in the Clemson defense just because their offense has started to get it going again. Right. You know, and they, they've evened this game up, and now they're flying around a little bit more against this Carolina offense. They know how to get behind and come from behind yeah. to win. They've done that enough this year. And they were 10 down in this one, but even now at the four and a half minute mark, remaining second quarter. On third and six, Shaw, the slant completes, I think. Still battling for the ball, D.L. Moore. I think it's complete, but I think it's going to be short of yeah. the first down. It is short. Breland was in coverage. The redshirt freshman did a nice job of fighting for the football and then making the tackle right after the catch. South Carolina on the year on fourth down. They've gone 26 times, 18 times successful. Clemson trying to change up personnel. Fourth down and two. South Carolina. Timeout. Yeah. Clemson had to call timeout. They, they, they've had big confused on this whole Clemson. possession, it seems like. The second time out of the half. Well, maybe they can calm down during this break. We'll take the timeout, too, with 3.43 to go in the half. Six to download. Here's the biggest play of the game so far. Fourth down and two. Again, South Carolina 69%. They have converted fourth downs this year. Kenny Miles converts another one to the 31 yard line. Seven yards on the ground. And South Carolina keeps it moving. Well, it's just inside zone blocking here. Watch these guys on the interior do a nice job. The right guard, Terrence Campbell, gets a nice block on the middle linebacker. That was the key block. Kenny Miles fits it right in there, comes right off the block of Campbell, and a first down. Now the quick throw to Jeffrey. Alshon Jeffrey's got 11 more. Richard Hall made the tackle, but big number one moves the chains again. The thing I love about Alshon Jeffrey is he's a premier receiver, but he is not pouted when he hasn't had good numbers. Yep. And he's a great blocker downfield. In fact, that's how he hurt his hand, I believe, earlier in the game. Here's Kenny Miles again. And this is more work than Kenny Miles has gotten all year long, and he's taken advantage of it at the three-minute mark. South Carolina in the red zone this year. One of the most prolific scoring teams as you take a look at our red zone brought to you by Verizon as far as touchdowns are concerned. They've converted 27 attempts out of 34 trips, and 26 of them have been touchdowns. They got a second down at the 15. Shaw and might have gotten a yard. Jonathan Meeks made the tackle. Again, South Carolina two timeouts remaining as we're down to two and a half minutes in the half. They should do no worse than a field goal out of this, but it's third down and five on the ninth play of the Gamecock drive. Again, if you get single coverage without safety help on Alshon Jeffrey, you throw the ball up and give him a chance to go up and use his big frame and long arms and huge hands to make a play. That's Alshon way up right in the middle on top of your screen. Right there. Third down and five. They can get a first down the 10-yard line. It's a quarterback draw. 
Shaw's got the first. Shaw's got more. Wow. Touchdown. On third down, a 15-yard touchdown run. Connor Shaw now career high in the first half as far as what he's accomplished on the ground. Over 100 yards, and the extra point is good. Boy, we said what a weapon a running quarterback can be, especially one as shifty and as quick as number 14 is. Gamecocks regain momentum and the lead, 17-10. Connor Shaw caps off a 60-yard drive with a 15-yard touchdown run on a quarterback draw, 17 to 10, South Carolina. Yeah, and I want you to watch three blocks. Kenny Miles, the center, T.J. Johnson, and the tight end, Justice Cunningham. They do a great job of just getting enough of a block, getting in the way, and then the vision of Shaw is able to work off of those blocks and turn it into a touchdown. They weren't devastating pancake blocks, but they were enough to let... Connor Shaw read it and get to the end zone. What a first half he's had. Converted fourth and two and third and five on that drive. And they regain the lead. 17 to 10. Clemson has one timeout remaining. But more importantly, they got the Gamecock fans back on their side. Yeah. Jay Wooden's got it teed up. Andre Ellington is the return man for Clemson. Andre's just going to watch this one sail out of the end zone. Clemson will work from its own 20-yard line. Well, a little bit earlier in this quarter, we asked you our trivia question and it was only one quarterback's got four wins in the 109 game Clemson South Carolina rivalry who is it my partner had this one nailed right away Charlie Whitehurst to Clemson 2002 to 2005 Charlie now with the Seattle Seahawks in the NFL well what the current Clemson quarterback Taj Boyd needs to do is take care of the football right here they're very much in this game a couple turnovers deep in their territory last week in the second quarter really turned that game around. Dodge zips one down the sideline, in and out of the hands of DeAndre Hopkins. He would have had a first down. And the coaching staff over there saying he had enough of it before he went out of bounds. The officials say, I don't think so. Threw that right in between two guys. He just dropped it, trying to turn around and keep his feet down. Has it there. Turns and drops it. Boyd in trouble. He just got to get rid of this one. Melvin Ingram was coming. Yeah, the only thing about that, I don't know if that ball crossed the line of scrimmage. If you want to throw it away, it's got to cross the line of scrimmage. There comes the flag. He couldn't even get his arm up to whip yeah. it out of there because Ingram's so big and was coming off the corner. And we're going to have an intentional grounding. At least that's what we anticipate here. Intentional grounding. Number 10 of the offense. Lost it down to start of a foul. Third down. Before the next snap, let's check in with Reese. Third down. Brad Wendy's halftime report coming your way. The story of luck and the Irish. Rivalry Saturday. Plenty of scintillating rivalry games in the championship games and conferences. Most of them all set. We'll fill you in. Mark and Lou are here. See you in just a few minutes. Got to be very careful yep. with Clemson right here. Well, and this is Jay Davian Clowney, who's in the game now, did not play the first quarter. He's coming after Boyd, who again has to sidearm it out of there. And if that's an intentional grounding, it's a safety, but I guess he got that one back across the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I just think with the crowd revved up, with South Carolina excited, you got to be really conservative if you're Clemson on this possession. Clowney goes outside, Ingram moves inside, 
both on the same side of the formation, and Taj Boyd has to throw it away on two consecutive plays. And he's got to throw a jump pass here going the wrong way, and you can see it just barely made it over the line of scrimmage. And this is a tough spot for Dawson Zimmerman in his own end zone. South Carolina is going to get the ball back, and they've still got two timeouts to work with. Fair catch taken at the 48-yard line by Sanders. 128 to go. South Carolina still got plenty of time to work with. Let's check in with Holly. Well, guys, before the game, some of the South Carolina players on the sideline were kind of yelling at Taj Boyd, and they said, hey, man, we saw that tweet. And they've been riding him all this game. I guess Taj Boyd reportedly tweeted out that he thought South Carolina's defensive front was average. Now, we've tried to find that tweet, guys. We can't find it. I just asked the player. He told me he saw it. He said, we think the coach has made him take it down. But I don't think he's going to think they're average now after that last <laughs> series. Whether he did it or not, right. they're mad. <laughs> wow. Well, it could get worse unless Clemson's defense comes up with some plays here. Connor Shaw. And they do come up with a play. Down he goes. And it's Andre Branch, second time he's gotten to the quarterback tonight. Well, they brought extra people. They, they brought pressure to try to get to Connor Shaw to contain him. And they got the sack. And that's a much needed play, a negative play by the Clemson defense. Especially because the Clemson offense only ran 27 seconds off the clock yeah. in the three plays they had. One of which was a loss of down penalty on a... Intentional grounding. We're under a minute. See, I think Steve just wants, he'll just go to the locker room now. He Run it. Blitz. And Kenny Miles gets tracked down at the line of scrimmage. And our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into your tires. Goodyear, more driven. Beautiful night, packed house. Could be close to a record crowd. For this matchup between Clemson and South Carolina. I just want to go back to that story that Holly reported about the tweet and Taj Boyd and the defensive front. It's going to get even tougher because we mentioned Clowney didn't play in the first half. He was suspended for the first quarter. Uh, and he's only going to play some on third down situations, pass rush. But when he and Ingram are in the game at the same time, along with Devin uh, Smith, watch out. Violation of team rules why Clowney didn't play in the first quarter. Quarterback draw this time brought down before he could get going. Randy Moore, loss on the play, ends the half. But it was quite a half for Connor Shaw. As he had 100 yards rushing. Now at 88 yards after a couple of losses there at the end of the quarter. But he was over 100 yards at one point, including the touchdown run on the quarterback draw that gave them the lead that they have right now. 17 to 10 as we check in with Holly. Coach Barry, how have you been able to capitalize on Connor Shaw's rushing ability in this well, first half? he's a good runner, and hopefully uh, we didn't get him hit too hard right there. We weren't trying to. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of game left. Our defense playing well. Hopefully we can, uh, you know, throw the ball a little bit better. But we may have to keep running. Given what his injury situation is right now, how much do you keep running Shaw in the second half? Uh, well, it depends on how the game goes, but Kenny Miles is running well. He's giving us a little spark in there. Thanks, Coach. Kenny Miles has done very well tonight. More use by Kenny tonight than we've seen in a long, long time. Halftime 17 to 10 as we send it to Reese, Mark, and Lou in our studio for the Wendy's Halftime Report. Guys. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. The Tigers and the Gamecocks in a battle for the state of South Carolina. Connor Shaw, just a three-man rush, but it's coming from behind, and down he goes. Shaw, deep ball, Ellington, touchdown. Extra man on the pressure, flare out, Allen, touchdown. Shaw's got the first, Shaw's got more, touchdown. And we welcome you back to the SEC on ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Hampton Hotels. Just about set to start the third quarter as we take a look at the first half statistics. Domination by South Carolina. Look at the total yardage. Only 81 yards for Clemson and 21-24 time of possession. I think Clemson, Todd's got to be kind of happy. They're only a touchdown down. Absolutely. Right now, Connor Shaw at one point was over 100 yard rushing. He's nine out of 12 throwing yeah. the football. Yeah, I mean, he just had a beautiful first half. And, and you're right about Clemson. I mean, they only 81 yards. They came into the game averaging over 460 yards a game, but they're right in the football game. They'll get the ball to start the third quarter, but they've got to find a way to slow down Connor Shaw because he's been spectacular, primarily as a runner. 
He's looked downfield. He's made one big throw for a touchdown to Ellington. But most of the damage he's done is by running the football. He was sacked twice, but in running the football, a design run, over 100 yards rushing in the first half. And here was the last play when Steve said to Holly, I hope we didn't get him hurt there. We didn't mean to. And he's got his right calf with sort of a wrap on it right now. So we'll keep an eye on Connor Shaw and see if he's okay. Meanwhile, it'll be Jay Wooten to kick off. And Andre Ellington waits for Clemson to start the third quarter. Ellington runs up on this one and will take it at the eight-yard line. Ellington across the 25. Brought down near the 27 as we check in with Holly. Well, guys, I was just able to check in with the athletic trainer for South Carolina, and Connor Shaw's okay, although he's got that wrap on his cap that I don't remember being there in the first half. They're saying he's fine and was not treated. And uh, for Dabo Sweeney of Clemson, he said he is really disappointed in his defense. He said, I cannot believe that we're giving up touchdowns and double coverage. We've got guys in positions. They're not making plays. We're, getting, we're not getting off blocks. And he said, playmakers on offense have got to make plays. He told them, do your job and impose your will here in the second half. Allen, the tight end, has the only touchdown for Clemson. Is Ellington following the tight end on the block, picking up three. See, here, here's the deal with this Clemson offense. Their offensive line is good, but not a great dominant offensive line. Mm -hmm. They're tough guys. Now, right now, they're again playing without Philip Price, and so Brandon Thomas is the left tackle. But they do have great skill at wide receiver, at tight end and Dwayne Allen, and the way Taj Boyd has played at quarterback all year. Taj Boyd going to run it this time and lose yardage. But he does not run the football very well. Uh, he's not like Connor Shaw. He is a much better thrower than he is a runner. There's Philip Price, the left tackle, not in the lineup since early in the game. Quinn Smith made a stop on Boyd to set up the third down situation. Three out of seven tonight. Most of those came on their touchdown drive. Boyd over the middle, complete. Breaking free is Hopkins, and he's got a first down. DeAndre Hopkins. Remember, if you missed it early in the first half, a long ball to Sammy Watkins. It probably would have been a touchdown, but he dropped it on a little bit of an underthrow by Taj Boyd. At some point, they got to get this guy, number two, involved a little bit more. Missed last week's game with a shoulder injury he sustained in the Wake Forest win. Boyd steps up, going deep. Out there for Watkins, overshot him. There was double coverage, and there was two receivers yeah. in the same spot. That's why there was double coverage. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's good to have two defenders there. It's not good to have two receivers in the same spot. Somebody uh, ran the wrong route. They're both going for the ball. Now Watkins will take the sideline to get a breather as Boyd on second and ten throws it in the middle to Ellington trying to find his blockers and all he finds is a line of scrimmage and runs into his own guy Antoine McLean they tried to tried to influence Melvin Ingram that time that was the guy that blocked him was Ellington he just kind of hit him with a chicken wing and then slipped out onto the screen but it was well defended by the linebackers and it brings up another third and long The Clowney's in now on the outside. Ingram moves in one spot. Third and ten. Extra man coming on the blitz. Across the middle. Hopkins again, but he's dragged down before he can get to the first down. He's two or three yards shy, actually, as Gilmore made the hit, and there's a holding call to boot. Holding against the offense. Ten yards to previous spot. Third down. They're going to take the penalty, but they're going to give Clemson another chance. Rodney Polk, the middle linebacker, really timed his blitz perfectly in the center. Dalton Freeman was really in a bind after he snapped the ball. Here comes Polk, but watch him time it and come right in this gap. And the center is a little bit late getting his hands on him. And that's where the hold was, right in the middle of the protection. I don't know that I would have taken that penalty. It was going to be fourth down in about three. Yeah. And you give Clemson another chance. It is third and very long, but... But you also give this front four another chance to rush the quarterback and see if they can force Taj Boyd into a mistake. Third and 20. Boyd 
Flush from the pocket, throws on the run, and got it. Nope, Hopkins couldn't hold it as he flew out of bounds. Had his hands on it. That's two he's had like that, where he's been on the sideline, he's had his hands on the football, he's worried about getting his feet in bounds, and he's not able to possess the football. That's two times that's happened to Hopkins. Yep. Just catch it. And Worry about your feet later. Yeah, your coach is letting you know that very fact. He would have been short of the first down, but it would have been about an 18-yard pickup. As it is, fourth and 20. And Zimmerman to punt. We had a whistle before yeah. the punt. Well, this has been an ugly two and a half minutes to open up the third quarter. Ball starts. 33 of the offense. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. Fourth and 25. There been somebody here. They're going to get good field position out of this unless he really blasts a punt. Now it looks like taking that penalty was a good decision. Uh, see, you, you said it was. <laughs> I'm just your wingman, Todd. Fair catch taken at the 34 by Sanders. Early third quarter, South Carolina with a lead. They've got the ball when we come back. And you at 9 o'clock with Todd Blackledge and Holly Rowe. Brad Nestler with you from Columbia, South Carolina with the Gamecocks. Lead by a touchdown here in the third quarter. This will be their opening possession offensively of the third. Connor Shaw, big night running and throwing so far for South Carolina. They fake the fly sweep and they give it to Kenny Miles again. And Miles, five or six yards before Hall brings him down. It's been a good night for number 31, the junior out of Lawrenceville, Georgia. He's run hard. He's pass protected. He's caught the ball. Run with power. 43 yards on six carries for Kenny. Came in as a highly touted running back out of Georgia. His best year was a couple of seasons back before Marcus Lattimore took over and had his sensational freshman season. That being last year. Now Sean Jeffrey only had one catch in the first half for 11 yards. They threw at him three times, only connected once. On second and four, Shaw across the middle. Anderson, the tight end, all the way down inside the 30. He's still going. All the way to the six. Wow. Halliday was going to go down two or three times along the way. 55 yards later, he didn't. Even though Alshon Jeffrey only has one catch, he attracts double coverage. Nobody stays at home for the tight end crossing underneath. Two guys go with Alshon. Nobody picks up the tight end. Anderson. And a huge completion, an easy completion for Connor Shaw. 55 yards longest play, pass play of the year for South Carolina. Now Miles takes it near the one. Second down and goal coming up. And we're only four minutes into the third quarter. And not only did Clemson not do anything offensively on their possession, here comes South Carolina trying to put it in the end zone again. Beautiful execution on that crossing round. It's kind of a, I mean, that's man coverage. It's kind of a pick play. You got two guys going inside, another guy dragging underneath. That tight end was wide open. Two tight ends in there, including Anderson, who had the catch, but it's Kenny Miles hit at the line and got back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Third down and goal. That, when you got a guy like Connor Shaw yeah. right here, you start thinking about quarterback draw. Which he already scored on once. Yeah, they, they don't run option, but they run quarterback draw. They run quarterback sweep and power. Everything overloaded to the right at this point. Connor Shaw, pump fakes. Now he does throw. Touchdown. And it's the same guy that got him there. Kind of the same idea. The outside receivers came in. The tight end went out. 
Watch the two outside receivers drag their defenders inside. Nobody picks up the tight end. Connor Shaw did a nice job avoiding the rush and making the throw. 66-yard drive in a hurry. In five plays in a little over two minutes. South Carolina with Connor Shaw doing a little bit of everything. Touchdown pass to Anderson. It's 24 to 10 Gamecocks. Here's South Carolina looking for its 10th win of the season for only the second time in school history. And they're up 24 to 10 right now on their in-state rival Clemson Tigers. Wooten's kickoff. Ellington will field it a yard deep, and he'll bring it out. Ellington's got some room. Andre Ellington, a little bit of a convoy now, got it to midfield and down to the 45-yard line, and that is a great answer by the Clemson special teams on a 55-yard kickoff return. Yeah, when you're in this kind of a situation, you need any kind of spark you can get. And the kicking game provided one here. And I'll tell you what, this guy's had a nice ball game. Andre Ellington has played like a warrior tonight for yes, Clemson. He is. He's going to have to get a breather right now, though. So D.J. Howard will be in the Clemson backfield. Todd Boyd's got to get something rolling here. Quarterback for the Tigers. Here comes a blitz on Todd. He throws across the middle. Look out, Mr. Umpire. Sammy Watkins, but no gain on the play. Now, Taj Boyd, you're right. He does have to get something going, but he doesn't need to panic right now because this team, because of the skilled players they have, they can score. I mean, they can come back in a football game. They've done that a lot this season, so they don't have to panic. They've got excellent field position here. They have to find some way to put some points on the board with this field position in this drop. Dwayne Allen in motion out to the slot on the right side. Boyd. Flushed out of the pocket, in trouble, a lot of trouble, got away somehow, and almost completed it again. Dwayne Allen. That's the third time, one for Allen and two for Hopkins tonight, where the throw actually late from Boyd was catchable. Well, again, these defensive ends, and there's three of them. Jadavian Clowney, the freshman, Melvin Ingram, the senior, and Devin Taylor, the junior, all three are really getting after the quarterback here. This is the fifth time Clemson's had a third and ten or longer. They don't want to waste that kick return they just got at the 45-yard line of the Gamecocks. And, ooh, it's getting loud in here. Boyd runs right into a sack. Taylor. See, this is Taj Boyd's fault. Landon Walker, number 72, he's expecting Taj Boyd, if he does anything, that he'll step up in the pocket when the rush comes upfield. But Taj Boyd is going to start to try to run outside. Instead of stepping up, he tries to run outside, and the offensive tackle has no chance in that situation. Well, they took great field position and blew it away. And now they've got a punt. Sanders, fair catch, taken back around the 17-yard line. Wow, they had the opportunity after Ellington's kick return. It was wasted. South Carolina with the offense when we come back. I think we should go over to the Cockabooses after the game's over, Todd. Let the traffic go, kind of clear up. Awesome. Yeah, that would be. If any guys want to invite us over there, just <laughs> look us up. So far, quarterback comparison, all kind of Shaw. Almost perfect two touchdown passes. At one point, he was over 100 yards rushing as well. Todd Boyd, again, is struggling tonight, as has been the case really three of the last four yeah. weeks. Well, and with Connor Shaw, the thing about him that's impressive is he's efficient. He's very efficient, and he makes good decisions with the ball. You know, and I think that's, as a quarterback, that's one of the most important things is to make good decision when the ball's in your hand. Don't make risky throws. Run it when it's not there. He does a great job of, of taking care of the football. I think as much as anything, that's a product of being a coach's son. 
Here's a counter to Kenny Miles, and he'll lose a couple. Corey Crawford, freshman defensive end, made the hit. You almost get to feel like Clemson's defense is going to have to make a, a big-time play, a turnover, something, even, maybe even get it into the end zone to, to try to turn the tide a little bit for the Tigers. Tigers think about a blitz. South Carolina takes its time. On second down at 12. They are going to come with an extra man. Shaw floats it out. Incomplete. Alshon Jeffrey was the closest man. We check in with Reese Davis. Reese. Brad, we showed you earlier Robert Griffin, the third of Baylor, taking that hit, coming back, scoring a touchdown. But after taking that shot to the head, not going to play in the second half. So old Nick Florence has come in, throws a touchdown pass to Terrence Williams. All Florence is a six out of seven with two touchdowns. Baylor up 45-28 over Texas Tech. Robert Griffin the third with the great pass in the final seconds to beat Oklahoma and has had a sensational season and uh, one of the more fun guys to watch in college football. Andrew Luck, Heisman candidate, obviously playing on ABC the same time we're doing this game. And timeout taken by South Carolina. Charge timeout, South Carolina. 731 remaining in the third quarter. Speaking of the Heisman race, as you take a look at the Heismanology poll results, projected right now that Trent Richardson would be the leader. Andrew Luck, there's Robert Griffin the third, in third. Matt Barkley, USC, and Case Keenum of Houston. That's uh, official Heisman voters that are part of that poll. You and I have stayed out of that at this point, yeah. but right now we've been talking about it before yeah. the game. we got to start thinking about it because the ballots came in the mail and yeah. we're only a week or so away. Well, I, I don't mind talking about when we get to November. Yeah. And, and to me, my biggest criterion in, in who I vote to win the Heisman is who plays the best in the biggest game. Mm -hmm. You know, on the big stage and the big games, the games that count the most. Who, who really steps up. And uh, right now, to me, I, I think Trent Richardson has been that guy. Well, Trent had over 200 yards rushing today in the Auburn game. He also had a touchdown receiving. And he played well in the only game Absolutely. they lost. He was the whole offense yeah. against LSU. Of course, George did it in 80 here. The Duluth Georgia native. Heisman Trophy winner here at the game tonight. And was getting the crowd riled up before the kickoff. I think this is the biggest play of the game for Clemson right here. And again, Shaw, they try to swipe it from him from behind. Luckily, he held on to it. They bring him down after a three-yard pickup. So again, Connor Shaw takes care of the football. Even though he's carrying it a little loosely, he knows at the end to tuck it in there. You know, there wasn't any air. Even though they were going for the football, he knew when to protect the football at the end of that play. Malachi Goodman gave it a good swipe, but it didn't cut, didn't quite come out, and now it's punting time for Scribner Howard. And I think you set up a return here. You don't go for a block and risk running into the kicker. High kick. And a deep kick as well. Back at the 32-yard line. Boy. Clemson was thinking they were going to get that around the 50, but uh, he got it not only up in the air, but he got it about 50 yards downfield. 24 to 10 as Clemson goes back to work offensively. Celebrating seventh year sponsoring the Good Hands field goal, and that's Allstate makes contributions to participating universities, general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, Allstate's contributed more than $2.5 million in scholarship monies. Well, one thing we haven't seen from Clemson yet is a wheel route. They love those in their offense, either out of the backfield or with their tight end. Going to give it Sammy Watkins. Watkins with a stiff arm on Ingram, but Ingram still brings him down and pick up a five. Any way they can get it in number two's hands, if not the most electrifying freshman in the country, I don't think I've seen another one like this guy. Well, and, and he's so good once he catches the ball. I mean... Coming into this game, he had more yards after the catch than Alshon Jeffrey had in reception yards. I mean, that's amazing what he does after he catches the football. Andre Ellington's going to be in the Wildcat again and take the direct snap. They fake the fly sweep. Ellington just takes it off tackle. He's got a blocker in front. 
and almost got face masked downfield as he got a first down. Boy, D.J. Howard, the other back in the backfield, got a beautiful block on the edge. Ellington was running that all the way, and watch number 22 lead this play and get a block right out here on the perimeter of the defense. They fake it to, to Watkins. First down run across midfield. And Todd Boyd's going to get it off to Bellamy. And Bellamy brought down at Ingram and Shaq Wilson after a pickup of four. Again, there's still no time, no reason to panic. Right. If you're Taj Boyd, if you're Clemson, you're down 14 points. We're still in the third quarter, and you still have an explosive offense. It hasn't really gotten on track yet tonight, but it only takes a couple big plays. On second and six, it's going to be Taj Boyd. Carrying a tackler with him, a yard shy of the first down. Five minutes remaining in the third quarter. South Carolina jumped out to a 10 to nothing lead. Clemson answered with 10 straight points. Then Connor Shaw, 15 yard touchdown run late in the second quarter, gave South Carolina the lead at halftime. South Carolina's added another touchdown. That's where we stand right now with just under five minutes to go in the third. Oh, tripped up and he lost yardage. Arabian Robertson got him down low. And it's going to be a yard shy, maybe more. I thought Clemson might have thrown the ball on that down because I figured Dabo Sweeney was thinking this was four down territory anyway. But they come up short and they still have fourth down. And now it's a very big one because it's at the 40 yard line and he wants to talk it over. 410 remaining in the third. Clemson takes a timeout. We'll see if they go on fourth and a long one when we come back. Fourth down and one when Davo Sweeney took a timeout. For Clemson, down two touchdowns and near the 40 yard line. So here we go. They're two for three on third and ones. This is the first fourth down attempt of the game for them. Sammy Watkins sets up in the backfield. They fake it to him. Boyd's going to get the first down. Best run of the night for Todd Boyd when they needed it the most. Faked it to Watkins and went straight ahead. Yep. Good push up front. And Boyd really protected the football. Put both arms around it after the fake. Got the first down. Temporarily quiets the crowd at the four-minute mark. First and ten, Clemson. Boyd. Flares it out to Hopkins. Made a catch off the top of his shoes, but he lost a yard anyway. Might have been better off if he dropped it. Yeah, he got misdirected just a little bit by Devin Taylor, and it wobbled over there, and yeah, I guess he caught it. He'd probably love to have a review and take it away to gain a yard on the deal. Boyd. Here comes Wilson. He's just got to throw this thing away. Jack Wilson coming with the heat up the middle. Well, they're timing those blitzes, too. That makes it even tougher for the offensive line. They're locked into the snap count. Take a look at South Carolina's defense. Coming in, good numbers tonight. Even better numbers. And this is... Uh, we asked that question, you know, against a good offense. Would they rise to the challenge? The last time we saw them against Arkansas, they didn't really get it done. Tonight, they're getting it done. Clemson's longest play tonight is 16 yards. They need a little over 11 just to convert here. Boy, this time he steps up in the pocket, dancing around and going down. Nope, not yet. But he got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Now the question becomes, do you try a long field goal here? Well, credit to South Carolina secondary because he did step up in the pocket that time to try to keep his eyes downfield. Wasn't able to find anybody open. And right now Dabo is going to elect to try to pooch punt the ball 
try to down it inside the 10 and, and try to maintain the field position edge. Even though they've had it in South Carolina territory the last two possessions, no scores, try to maintain the edge. Would have been about a 53-yard field goal attempt had they tried that. And now they are going to be able to down it inside the five, as Todd called it, down at about the three-yard line. So that worked out pretty well. South Carolina deep in its own territory, but up two touchdowns as we check in with Reese. Brad Sports Center right now presented by Discover Card, something that finally apparently has worked out pretty well. The NBA owners and players have a tentative agreement to end the lockout. The pertinent thing for fans, 66-game schedule starts on Christmas. Florida State and Florida on ESPN2. Seminoles up 21-0. John Brantley's been knocked out of the game. Seminoles have four interceptions. That one coming by Terrence Parks against Jacoby Brissett. 21 zip Seminoles about to get the win. So an early Christmas present for the NBA fans. Kenny Miles on a handoff, maybe got to the five, and he's got Malachi Goodman draped all over him. Aerial coverage tonight provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear's learn making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Can't have a better night in late November on the last Saturday of November than what we had. It was 65 degrees at kickoff. It's about 60 right now. Second down and eight. Connor Shaw from his own end zone. Deep sideline to Jeffrey. Any flags? Cody Sensiball was right there with him. I'll tell you what, Cody Sensiball has earned some respect tonight. This guy has played beautifully on Alshon Jeffrey. Alshon actually could have got called for a penalty. Yeah. He's got a hold of Sensabaugh's jersey the whole way. I mean, if any call was going to be made, that should have been pass interference. I think it's a good no call, and Sensabaugh has played nose-to-nose -nose with Jeffrey all night. I wonder if Connor Shaw wants to put it up again here from his own end zone. He apparently will. Nope, he won't. And he's going to be knocked out of bounds, so South Carolina's going to have to kick it away from their own end zone. Good job by the Clemson yeah. defense. That's what that's what the percentages say to do. You know, I mean, even though they're frustrated they didn't score with the good position, keep that field position edge, keep the short field, and see if they can get it done. Eventually, they're hoping to get a breakthrough. Second straight three and out for South Carolina. So Scribner Howard is, as you can see, a couple of yards deep in his own end zone. That one block this year. This one's going to bounce at about the 36 yard line. Well, now Clemson's got another great opportunity after just a 24 yard punt. And they've come from behind before. Remember, they trailed Auburn 21 to 7. They said, no way. They come back, but Sammy Watkins and Clemson did. And they won 38 to 24 to snap Auburn's long winning streak. Then Maryland was up by 18, but back comes, guess who? Sammy Watkins, and Clemson wins 56-45. And then Wake Forest had a two-touchdown lead, much like South Carolina has right now. Clemson comes back on a field goal to win at the end, 31-28. Now they've got a chance, trailing by two touchdowns, starting plus side of the field again. And they get to the 35-yard line on a one-yard game. The biggest difference between those three teams that they came back on and this one, South Carolina is the best defense of all that game. Yep, that's right. Uh, this defense is playing like a bona fide top five defense in, in all of college football tonight. They came in as the number five defense as far as total yardage. Here's Boyd getting it out to Watkins. He got a block, slipped, and fell, though, as he got near the 30-yard line. Had Dwayne Allen out there trying to lead the way, but they stay with out, uh, Sammy Watkins, and Sammy has not had a big play yet tonight. No, and this is an offense coming into the game that has had 88 offensive plays of 20 yards or more. And I think we've already said the longest play is 16 tonight. Final half minute of the third quarter, third down and four. Blitz coming. Boyd fires it, completes, and it's a first down to Jerron Brown. Best thing Taj Boyd did that time was stay right there in the pocket. He didn't get antsy. He didn't get happy feet. He knows pressure's going to come. But watch him just stand right in there, set his feet, and make an accurate throw for the first down. 
That's more the Taj Boyd throws that we saw in the first eight weeks of the season. And now, direct snap coming up. And the Wildcat, Ellington fakes a handoff, goes straight up the middle, and Ellington slides his way to maybe another first down to end the third quarter. So South Carolina leads 24 to 10, but the Clemson Tigers are on the move. An all-important fourth quarter coming up in the battle in the Palmetto State. Stick around with us. Set to start the fourth quarter through three. That's how the scoring has gone. Clemson shut out in the third, but they're on the move right now. And we showed you all their comebacks. A lot of that in the fourth quarter when they've outscored their opponents 92-37. They need 14 more in this quarter to tie it up. First things first, Ellington. A tough yard if he got one. Travian Robertson, the captain on the front wall defensively, made the first hit. Taylor and Robertson and Quarles and Ingram, Clowney, they are men up front for South Carolina. Todd Boyd on second down, running for his life again. Lobs it near the goal line, and Dwayne Allen saying, how about a holding call? The, uh, again, the quick exit from the pocket and the quick move away really limits what Taj Boyd can do. If you can step up in the pocket, that's what you want to try to do. Looks like we're going to have a legal man downfield. Well, the play took so long, I think some of the linemen were thinking that it was a run or a scramble. Tom Zamorski with a call. I think he's trying to say it's not lost it down. He's arguing with his own officials. Or with the South Carolina sideline, one of the two. All right, Tom, what do you got? Ineligible downfield, number 55 of the offense. Penalties decline. Third down. All right, now we got it. I don't know where number 55 was. I couldn't even see him in there. Anyway, third down at 10. Boyd in trouble again. Ingram's got him again. Four-man rush, but when Melvin Ingram lines up inside, he's actually more difficult to deal with than when he's on the outside. They put Clowney outside. They move Ingram inside. So here's Ingram working against the guard, David Smith, that just goes right by him. And I'll tell you what, when you line up inside, you have a shorter path to the quarterback also. Gatton Zero to try a 40-yard field goal. An official stop play here. And you're thinking, well, what good's a field goal going to do? It's going to make it a two-possession game at least. It would take a field goal, a two-point conversion, and a touchdown to even it up. Timeout. That's him getting ready to try a 40-yard field goal, which would make it an 11-point game. And in theory, then, it's a two-possession situation. I, th I think you got to go for the points here right now because you've had field position advantage. And you got to take advantage of it and capitalize to some degree. Canton Zero's kick is on the way, and it's good. So at least they get something out of that, and that's something to build on as Stabo Sweeney his team has cut it to 24 to 13 with 13 48 to play in this 109th renewal between the tigers and the gamecocks let's check in with holly rope well guys frustration starting to mount on the clemson sideline their offensive coordinator chad morris just came over and really got after the offensive line he's like guys i can sick and tired of somebody coming over after every bad series saying oh my bad my bad we can't have it be somebody's bad every single time you guys are better than that the offensive line trying to get it together right now they only got 13 yards out of the eight plays in that last drive and then had to kick the field goal but they're a little bit closer 24 13 nfl countdown coming up tomorrow tomorrow 10 o'clock for more information, log on to ESPN.com.
Only 134 yards in a team that came in, as you see, was 18th in the country, second in the conference in yardage. Might have helped to have that guy out there, but he played, what, maybe a series or so at left tackle, and that was all. Spencer Benton will tee it up. Bruce Ellington and Jameer Bird are back waiting on the kick. This one's a free ball right now, picked up finally by Cunningham, the tight end. Clemson's headed to the ACC title game in Charlotte next Saturday night. They're going to meet Virginia Tech. The Hokies put it on the Cavaliers today in Charlottesville. So Virginia Tech at 11-1. They're going to move up in the BCS standings yeah. by at least one notch. They were impressive today, too. They really were. It wasn't just a, a win. It was an impressive win. So they'll be 11-1. Clemson, unless they do something about it, will be 9-3 going into that ACC title game in Charlotte. Connor Shaw will be under center here from the 31 yard line. Kenny Miles, no gain. They'd like to use some clock and then play field position, but this one's far from over. Clemson can score in a hurry if they get their hands back on the football. That hasn't been the case tonight, but over the course of the season, they certainly have struck quickly. And Sammy Watkins has been held in check by the South Carolina defense, and that's really helped the cause. Now back to the gun on second and ten. And he's trying to shift Cunningham, the tight end, to the other side. They're going to have to blow another time out unless they hurry up here. They only have one remaining. They do get the snap with two seconds. Miles, not quite a first down, but a quick inside move. Picked up nine. Isn't that amazing that Kenny Miles, who hasn't played much all year yeah. tonight, just having a huge night? Well, and I think Steve Spurrier just feels like he's got the hot hand. There's nothing wrong with Brandon Wilds, who's had 300-yard games coming into tonight, but Kenny Miles has been the hot guy. And uh, has played well, and that's what Steve Spurrier is going with right now. So now they'll be able to chew a little more off that clock, courtesy of the first down run. Connor Shaw doing it with his legs and his arm tonight, trying to get the 10th win of the season for South Carolina. Anderson, who caught one of his touchdown passes, the tight end, trots out into the slot. Bruce Ellington. They fake the fly sweep. Connor Shaw's going to keep it, and he's going to lose a yard. Played well that time. Carico Hawkins in on the play along with Brandon Thompson. Brandon Thompson, we haven't called his name too much tonight, but he's one of the premier interior defensive linemen in all of college football. Ranked really high by uh, Todd McShay and Mel Kuyper as a guy going on to the next level. Six foot... Two, 315 pounds. Out of Thomasville, Georgia. Down in South Georgia. The 11 and a half minute mark, second down and 11. Here comes a blitz. Now Shaw's got to run with it. DB's had their back turned, and with that, he almost got a first down. Rashad Shaw. Shaw Hall Rashad came up, Hall. made the hit, but he got 10. Well, you called it. Richard Hall was coming up to blitz, but then he had to peel off into coverage because the back was going to go out. Watch 31 have to go with Kenny Miles, and when that happened, nobody had the edge of the defense secured, and Connor Shaw, good recognition to run with the football. Connor Shaw over 100 yards rushing for the second time tonight. <laughs> he was at 101 earlier, and then he lost a couple. Including a 15-yard touchdown that was big right before the end of the second quarter. That gave him the halftime lead going to the locker room. Third and one. Miles, he got it. Well, this guy is playing hard. I mean, he is running the football with power. Good leg drive. Came out with the seniors. 
knows this is, I guess, his last game here in williams Bryce Stadium, and he is putting on a show. He's going to remember it, isn't he? Yep. Especially if it ends up being a win. 58 yards on 13 carries for Kenny. And another first down. And again, the clock is becoming a factor. Clemson has two timeouts remaining, but they're down 11. And if South Carolina gets any kind of points out of this, then the Tigers are really in a hole. Shaw pump fakes and now fires complete to Ellington. Another first down inside the 30. Well, again, I can't stress enough how much of a factor Alshon Jeffrey is, even though he's only got one catch. The pump fake was to Alshon. The defense responded to the pump fake, and that left Ellington open for a big completion. One of the fine passing nights for Connor Shaw on this season. His biggest night came against Kentucky. Most of his career highs, including four touchdowns, but tonight 12 out of 17. Very efficient. Miles again for a tough two or three. And we're under 10 minutes. Yeah, I'd say back-to-back -back games, you can't play much better than Connor Shaw's playing. He was 16 of 18 for 217 yards, three touchdowns last week against the Citadel. Also, 90 yards rushing, which at that point was a career high, and now he's passed that tonight. For now. Four-minute drive so far. And the ninth play of the drive. Taking their time, using as much clock as possible. And Ashaw will come up and get under center. Straight handoff to Kenny Miles. Yard, that's about it. And once again now, Clemson faces a very, very important play right here. Third down and six. They need to hold South Carolina to a field goal here. A field goal keeps it as a two-possession game. A two-score game if they can hold him to a field goal. Third down at six. They've got to get to the 19-yard line. South Carolina. Sean, an empty backfield. Be a quarterback run again, which we've seen several times tonight from him. Or do they take a chance and put it in the air? They're going to take their last time out. Some confusion again. So they're out of timeouts, but they do have an 11-point lead. With 8.34 to go, the coach can only smile. Marcus Lattimore hoping his teammates can hold on here in the fourth quarter and get their 10th win of the season even without him. 8.34 left, 24-13. And our SEC on ESPN matchup, Clemson in South Carolina, the 109th renewal of a Rivalry that started back in 1896. Connor Shaw having another banner night. But that was the Citadel last week. This is Clemson. And he's playing even better. Blitz from the secondary. Shaw throws complete. First down. Ace Sanders. Needed six, they got seven. Well, they got Sanders isolated on a safety. Jonathan Meeks, good decision to roll the pocket to get Connor Shaw out away from the pressure. A little bit low on the throw, but the good news is A. Sanders is pretty low to the ground at five foot seven, <laughs> so he didn't have to reach too far. That's true. Son of the former Florida State and NFL player, Tracy Sanders. Ace actually is Tracy, there's call him Ace. He's shaking up a little bit on the play, but he got the first down. 11 play drive now coming up. Connor Shaw, and they chewed that clock down to eight and a half minutes. He's working clock. You see him look up right there? He's looking at the sideline, he's looking at the clock, and he realizes right now, hey, we're working the clock as well as working on this Clemson defense. He's not even going to put his mouthpiece in until the last five seconds. It'll be right around the eight-minute mark when he takes the snap. Miles bumps off one man and made a positive gain.
Clemson, two timeouts remaining, down 11. This is getting to the point where it's been about six minutes that South Carolina has held the football. We said they really don't need points as much as they need time off the clock. But now they're in the range to get more points. Miles going to be dropped for a loss this time by Rennie Moore. Along with Andre Branch. He's going to be third down and about 11 now. The last third down play that South Carolina converted. Clemson chose to blitz to try to get to Connor Shaw. Steve Spurrier countered with a rollout with Connor Shaw, got outside the pressure and made the throw on the run to Ace Sanders. Five seconds on the play clock, third down and 11. Just got the snap off. Shaw is going to go to the end zone. And out of the end zone, Jeffrey was the intended receiver. Tony Sensoval was covering. And now the clock stopped with 631, but out comes the field goal unit, Jay Wooten. If you're going to give Alshon a chance, you got to at least keep it in the field of play. That's what Steve's frustrated about. You know, let our guy go up and try to make a catch. Don't throw the thing out of bounds. Throw it up where he can go up and use that size to try to make a play. Wooten hit one tonight, only six out of nine. This will be a 37-yard attempt. What you don't want to do is get it blocked. Not only did he not get it blocked, he knocked it right through. And that gives South Carolina even more breathing room. Still a two-possession game, but now Todd Boyd and the Tigers know they need two touchdowns. ESPNU at 9 o'clock. Happy Gamecock fans right now. Two touchdowns. And time is of the essence if you're a Clemson Tiger fan. 6.26 to play. 50-yard drive took 7.22. That's the big part. Off the clock. Wooten's 37-yard field goal. And now here's his kickoff. And perfectly placed. Bounced it at the 1 into the end zone. And it'll come out to the 20. That'll be a happy coach on that kickoff. Speaking of Reese Davis, here he is. Reese. Brad, just want to get you up to date on a few of the rivalry games. Florida State going to take care of Florida in half a minute. It's 21-7 there. Mississippi State winning the Egg Bowl again. They are now bowl eligible. Houston Nuts final game at Ole Miss. He finishes with an 0-8 conference record. Georgia headed to the SEC championship game after beating Tech 10th time in 11 years. And Washington wins the Apple Cup. Here it's a battle in the Palmetto State. Todd Boyd running for his life again and one hops it. To Andre Ellens in courtesy of Melvin Ingram. Well, we asked the question, would this defense be able to affect Todd Boyd? And, and they have. Yep. You know, that, that's, and it's really been the front four. There's been an occasional linebacker blitz. Antonio Allen has blitzed some, but for the most part, it's been the front four that has harassed Todd Boyd into a very uncomfortable night. Dodge throws high and incomplete intended for Hopkins. Nice coverage by Holloman. And see, when you've been under pressure all night, then even when there isn't pressure, sometimes you think there is. That time, Taj Boyd had time, but he still threw the ball off his back foot because he's, he's just kind of feeling phantom pressure on every snap. The great year that Taj Boyd has had. You got to remember, though, it's his first year as a starter, and there were going to be some bumps along the way. The bumps, unfortunately, came after an 8 no start. Fires come intercepted by Holloman. Holloman coming the other way. Got a convoy of blockers brought down inside the 20. So he made back-to-back -back good plays. And there is joy in Columbia. Wasn't really sure which receiver Taj Boyd was intending this for. Hopkins was out there. That's who Holloman stepped in front of, but there was an underneath receiver as well that I thought he was going to and threw it over his head. But the net result, the seventh interception 
in the last four games for Taj Boyd. And Holloman's first is a big one at the six minute mark. Snap was wide, but Shaw got it in the gut of Kenny Miles, who eked a yard out of it. Well, I'd be surprised if you see a ball go in the air again for South Carolina. This is, uh, you know, that's their 46th rush attempt of the game. They've eaten up nearly 34 minutes of clock by doing so. And right now they just like to eat this last five and a half minutes up and not even worry about throwing it. Clemson's going to head into the ACC title game. It appears limping. Shaw, he is going to throw. He's got a man, and it's a touchdown to Alshon Jeffrey. If indeed it's Alshon Jeffrey's last game, even though he's got a year of eligibility left, a lot of talk about it maybe going to the NFL. He won't forget this catch. How about the throw? I mean, Cody Sensabaugh, again, is in perfect position. A perfect throw by Connor Shaw. Wow. Wooten. Following the Clemson turnover on the interception by Holloway. Connor Shaw putting on a show for us tonight. Under duress, too. Malika Goodman was right there. Connor Shaw stepped up and threw a perfect throw to Alshon Jeffrey. Just like I said, run one play <laughs> and then throw. The SEC on ESPN and an entire timeout that we just took. The chant was one more year, one more year for Alshon Jeffrey after the touchdown catch. In the back of the end zone has given the Gamecocks what appears to be an insurmountable lead, 34 to 13. Kickoff goes. Martavis Bryant. Bryant picks up a block, weaving his way, and then tripped and went down before the kicker could get him. The 5-11 remaining, and now Clemson down in a huge hole. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear tonight. Everything Goodyear's learned, making tires that go the distance, inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Brad Nessler, Ty Blackledge, Holly Rowan, our ESPN crew, williams Bryce Stadium. It's been a happy place tonight. Gamecocks jumped out to a 10-0 lead. Clemson even it in 10. It's been all South Carolina ever since. And now just over five minutes left. And it looks like South Carolina's going to win. They're third in a row against their in-state rivals from Clemson. And now Todd Boyd roughed up by Jadavian Clowney. Well, you, <laughs> you see the athleticism of Clowney. I mean, that's the thing everybody says about him is physically, athletically, he, he's not a freshman. He still has to get reps and learn technique and learn how to play at this level. But when it comes to a play like that where he can just use his athleticism, Wow. Loss of two. Second down at 12. Todd Boyd has time this time and throws tips. Knocked out of bounds. Clowney was the number one prospect signed by South Carolina. That's something that Steve Spurrier has really put together since he's been here, especially in the last three or four years. First, Stephon Gilmore was Mr. Football in South Carolina. He's now the mainstay in the secondary. Then it was Marcus Lattimore, despite the fact that he's injured now. He was Mr. Football and had a sensational freshman year last year. Then Clowney signed. And now, from what we understand, the number one wide receiver in South Carolina has verbally committed to the Gamecocks for next year. To keep your best in state and then go get some yeah. other ones and you've always got a chance. Boyd rifles it out. Sammy Watkins. And out of bounds after a first down catch. That's the longest play for Sammy tonight. 23 yards. In fact, it's the longest play for Clemson tonight.
Well, South Carolina as a state has always produced a lot of good high school football players. And the problem for South Carolina is that other teams in the SEC would come in here and get the top player. Right. And what Steve has been able to do, and Clemson to a certain degree as well, is keep the best players at home. Boyd with a flag down. We'll go out of bounds. Ooh, what a big, vicious hit by Jerron Brown on a block at the last second before Boyd went out of bounds. But the flag was before that. formation against the offense five men in the backfield five yards the previous spot first down not enough guys on the line of scrimmage too many in the backfield at the end of the play watch the block coming up and Shaq Wilson Oof. Shaq's gonna feel that one for a while yeah, that's one where a wide receiver kind of sneaks up on a middle linebacker you, you don't want to try that head on when he can no. see you uh -uh. if you can sneak up and get it then go for it Boyd, deep ball on the sideline, caught. Nope, dropped again. Hopkins had it again. How many times has he had the ball in his hands and let it go as he either hit the turf or went out of bounds? Well, he's been pretty sure-handed all season. 52 catches coming into the game, but you're right. There's three or four times in that one he, he had until he was going to the ground and it popped out. Now to 343. South Carolina with a big lead. Boy throws on the run short, but that was the wheel route. They, they, they haven't run it all night. It's, it's a big part of what they do and have done. And even that one, Taj Boyd kind of threw off his back foot and under through it. Brandon Ford's the guy trying to make this catch. And he trapped it. We were talking about recruiting a little while ago. And we asked Steve Spurrier, is this game big because of recruiting? And usually they say yes, the coaches, when it's an in-state rivalry. Yeah. He said, you know what, not really. I think most kids either grow up their high schools, South Carolina, fans or their high schools Clemson fans that type of thing didn't think it was that big a deal as far as this game but certainly they'll take what is about to be a victory tonight and uh, make some make some claims that hey we've been number one in the state for three yeah. years in a row well I think that the South Carolina defense imposed their will on this Clemson team tonight I mean, they really showed up again the last time we saw this team it was against Arkansas and uh, their quarterback, Tyler Wilson, and those receivers, they kind of had their way. The Arkansas offense picked them apart a little bit. Boy, tonight they have locked down this Clemson offense. Another third and long. And Todd Boyd goes down. This time it's Travian Robertson. So they've had third and ten or more a bunch of times tonight, and they've only converted once. And with the pressure from that front four, they can't get the job done again. I'll tell you again, I want to get back to Steve Spurrier and what he's done here at South Carolina in making them legitimate in the SEC East and by doing it a different way. They're not throwing the ball all over the place. They're running the football. They're playing great defense. They have the fifth ranked defense in, in college football. And he has really turned the corner. So with this with this program, a lot of people when he took the job didn't think he could do it here. Told him he's he was done, crazy. He's done it. <laughs> yeah. Kenny Miles for a yard. Let's check in with Holly. Well, one of the things that Steve Spurrier has also done here is change the face of this rivalry. When he first got here, he noticed beat Clemson signs all around the building, in the weight room, in the locker room, in the coach's office. And he's like, take those dadgum things down. This is not a team that we need to put on a pedestal. We need to be worried about winning the SEC, not beating Clemson. So he took them down. He made them just normal guys. And now 
This is the first time since 1968 through 70 that they've beat them three straight times. They're not on a pedestal anymore. No. Nope. First time since Woodstock. Todd was in short pants at the time. <laughs> a little over two minutes to go. Kenny Miles just keeps banging away on the inside of the Clemson defense as we have a time here to take a look at our All-State good hands play. A guy that's had good hands for three years for South Carolina. If this is his last catch, it was a dandy. Alshon Jeffrey, the last touchdown, and here's another look. The only thing that's really questioned, it certainly isn't his size, his athleticism, or the fact that he's a huge guy to try to cover. The only thing that uh, might be a question is if he's fast enough to be a number one draft choice in the NFL. But with that body, I think I could find a spot on the yeah. team for him. Yeah, he's a, he's a welcome sight for a quarterback as far as uh, your, your margin of error is pretty significant with him. No. Clemson's taken one of its final timeouts. They got one remaining load. I'm sure you probably already have that done, don't you? No. No. You haven't done yet. that? Not yet. Yeah. A lot of people wonder if I've done that yet, but I've got the phone that Alexander Graham Bell, whoever invented the phone, invented the phone. I still have that one. <laughs> he must have liked orange. <laughs> Here's Connor Shaw running all the way, sweeping. He wants to stay in bounds here, and he does spin his way within a yard of the first down marker at the two-minute mark. Jonathan time Willard. Out, Clemson. That's and Clemson takes the its 30. last time out with two minutes to go. Only the second time that South Carolina's going to have a 10-win season. The other time, you ask, 1984. The only other time, 10 wins in school history. Joe Morrison was the head coach. They beat Clemson, as a matter of fact, to end the regular season in a tight one, 22 to 21. Their only losses were at Navy and to Oklahoma. Now, Oklahoma State, I should say, and that was in the Gator Bowl. And they called that team Black Magic. I don't know what they'll call this team, but a 34 to 13 and resounding win. I think this takes a little bit of the sting out of the fact that yeah. they didn't make the uh, SEC championship game like yeah. they did a year ago. Georgia's going there, and of course they beat Georgia. But uh, tonight they're rolling right now as they head yeah. to their bowl game. They really are. And Connor Shaw is very impressive. He's getting better and better. Kenny Miles kind of came from out of nowhere tonight. Right. The defense was lights out. Uh, and you know what? Just going back to that with the SEC again. Before Steve Spurrier got here, even when Lou Holtz was here and they had a little success, they still couldn't beat the big three, right. Georgia, Florida, and Tennessee. They've done well, that, what, two years, two years in a row? row they beat them all three, yeah. you know? So, I mean, they've really established themselves as, you know, the, the team to beat or one of the teams to beat, one of the top two teams in the SEC East, and I don't think that's going to change for a while. Miles, and he's got another first down, and that'll just about do it. Kenny Miles, and that's good to see. Hadn't had a chance to play that much. Steve Spurrier was saying, yeah, we like Kenny. Kenny's going to get some work. Boy, I didn't know he was going to get this much work. <laughs> 71 yards, 21 carries. It's either a, a nice going away present or a... Uh, it invite you back. You sure present. you don't want to come back <laughs> present? Yeah. <laughs> and now, the victory formation for South Carolina. Connor Shaw takes a knee. We don't want him to take too many knees. He'll end up with less than 100 yards rushing again. And oh boy, I don't know if the ball coach is going to like this or not. Well, they set him up too. He had two guys holding him. Well, cool him off. <laughs> <laughs> Soon to be 67 years young. Still having fun. Still coaching him up. And even though he said we can't quite throw it like we used to tonight, they did. Yeah. The chance of SEC now, and he's saluting the crowd because this will be three straight wins over the ACC as far as the Clemson Tigers, their in-state rivals. Final minute. Davos Sweeney has got some work to do to get his troops now somehow back on track because Virginia Tech who they beat in the regular season and, and did it handily. Virginia Tech looked like a machine today against Virginia, and Clemson looked like a machine that was missing a couple of cylinders again. Yeah, he's got a tough job. You know, not just physically in getting them on the practice field, 
psychologically yeah. is going to be his biggest challenge. Getting this team back and feeling good about themselves and their chances because they still have a chance to go to a BCS Bowl if right. they win next week. This will be the last snap. And now some of the players are putting up three fingers for three years in a row. First time since 1968, 69, and 70. And the old ball coach wants that game ball. They go to 10 and 2. Second time ever with 10 wins. Also the first time they've had six SEC wins in a regular season. And let's go down to Holland. So how do 10 wins feel again, coach? Our defense played super. We made enough plays offensively. Connor Shaw was sensational taking care of this ball. Alshon, Bruce Ellington, but the defense was really sick for tonight. Who are you going to give that game ball to, coach? Oh, we, we're going to give away about 10 tonight. I'll get one myself. It's 10 wins here. Doesn't happen. Happened twice in 109 years, I think. So we'll, we'll enjoy this one. How do you describe your evolution of Connor Shaw? Last week, terrific, and then tonight, really putting it together. Yeah. Well, Connor's a good player, and he just needs to play a lot more. And uh, But he can run with the ball so well, really, it just gives you a chance. Alshon Jeffrey ended on a terrific yeah. catch. Coach, what do you say to him how he finished this this year? Well, he's, he's had a good year. We just hadn't been able to throw at him as much as we'd like. Uh, but uh, Bruce Ellington and Ace made a big catch. We had a lot of big plays tonight. Thanks, Coach. All right, Holly. Well, thanks, Holly. <laughs> as only Steve can say it. There's the trophy. The state champions, South Carolina over Clemson. 34 to 13. He might give away 10 game balls tonight, but I got a pretty good feeling that he's one he's holding on to is going in his office. He's keeping that one. <laughs> 34 13. Sports Center is following us. That's going to wrap it up. There's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. A happy group of Gamecocks and a win over the Tigers. 34 13 for Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe, and our entire ESPN crew. Brad Nessler saying so long from Columbia, South Carolina. Sports Center is next.